Let's talk about the power of winding baits for a little bit. Winding baits, by winding baits I mean uh, crank baits, chatter baits, uh, swim baits. Jerk baits not really a winding bait, but it's a moving shad replication. Shad replicating baits that move. Let's talk about the power of those in the fall. I hands down throw more hard baits in the fall than I do any other time of year. And, and all the ones I throw look like this. I mean, these are the ones I'm throwing right now, guys. These are all, you hold a couple of these for me? I mean, I'm throwing all of these baits right now. They all look like shad. They're all white. They all look like shad and they're all moving baits, right? And they're all a little different. Uh, you got a suspending jerk, but this is a shallow suspending jerk bait. Uh, you've got your traditional square bill, which David has right here. That's going to be a three to five foot diver. It's like an old 1.5. That's a crush 50X. You've got this one that's going to dive a little bit deeper, five to six, maybe seven. Then you got this one that's going to go eight to ten. Then you got the flat sided, the flat sided one, which I really like. It'll go about six to seven foot down, uh, and it's got a different wiggle, a really tight wiggle for when those fish are just not wanting to bite finicky fish like Lake Fork. I really like the flat sided crankbaits. Of course, we got the chatterbait. We got the chatter bait, you know, mm. good vibrating bait, shad replicating bait. It's a, it's a staple here on Lake Fork. And all of these baits that we're showing you right now, if you look at this tournament that's going on with these guys, they're so great. Uh, the guy in second place. Uh, um, Longren. Long, Lock, Lachlan. Lachlan, whatever, yeah. Lachlan. It's spelled L-A-U-G-H. I actually talked to him today. It's pronounced Lachlan. It's Lachlan. It's Irish, and Loch means lake, so his actual name is like Lakeland. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so your name's important. So you're a professional fisherman, your name's Lakeland? <laughs> That's awesome. I'll go with it. But anyway, he's throwing a chatterbait around docks, catching those tweener fish around docks. He's getting big bites by these fish, and, and, and he's throwing a chatterbait around the docks. Um, the square bill, Rick Klein's been throwing the square bills. A lot of guys been throwing the square bills around docks. The jerk baits played for Patrick Walters offshore. The flat sided crankbait caught that a flat sided crankbait similar to this one right here caught the biggest bass of the tournament. Uh, Seth Fighter caught it on a on a mid depth main lake point uh, on a flat sided crankbait that nine nine, and he also caught a five pounder right there at the same time. So all of these baits can play, but the power of the winding bait is so important because what have we talked about that makes it so difficult in the fall to stay consistent? Movement, right? They get on shad, shad move, shad move, shad move. And as much as finesse fishing is a viable option out here, and it's so important, and I think, David, I know you agree with that, and I know you, you well know that and preach that. Uh, when those fish go to moving around and chasing bait and following bait, not necessarily chasing it, not being active, but just following, they're wandering, they're moving, you better move too. And you, if you want to move, and be able to catch a fish while you're moving, you have to use winding baits. Uh, you have to pick, and you have to have all these kinds of baits because there's certain areas where those fish are gonna suspend and I need a jerk bait. And there's certain areas where I've got certain depths of timber and brush that I need to, the deflection qualities of that bait to fish it efficiently and effectively. And there's certain areas that don't have as much timber and have more vegetation and I need a chatter bait or a lipless crank bait. So you have to be proficient in fishing all that multitude of shad replicating winding baits in the fall. That way you can cover all the ground. And I suggest having all of them tied on and at a moment's notice because if you're going along fishing timber with a deep, with an oversized square bill, boom, you're bouncing, 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 and then you run into some grass and your square bill's widen up, well, pick that chatterbait up and roll it in there and keep going. And don't stop. Have it ready to go and be efficient. <coughs> Being efficient. I cannot explain to you. If you ever spend any time watching these guys on the water, you will learn very quickly what I mean how efficient these guys are and how much more percentage of the day their bait is in a strikeable percentage than ours is, is a big reason of why they're so much better than us. That's something that we can all improve on. We can all practice that. It's a very simple thing. It's a very simple thing technically wise, but it's not a very simple thing effort wise and mental effort focusing on it, right? Um, being efficient is so important in this sport. And those winding baits, not only do they allow you to cover all that ground, but as we're seeing by the leaders in this tournament, uh, those types of baits, chatterbait, the vibration, the sudden start-stop when it hangs up on grass or, or anything and breaks loose, that sudden start-stop, uh, the square bills when they deflect off cover or hit the bottom and deflect, that sudden change of direction. A jerk bait is nothing but start-stop. It basically is deflecting off itself the entire time, you're, every time you twitch it. Uh, all of these type of things 
cause what we all refer to as a reaction bite. And a reaction bite, that when you're drawing a reaction bite, on average, you're going to get a bigger fish to bite. It's easier to get a bigger fish to react to a bait than it is to feed him a bait. When I say feed him a bait, we're talking about dragging a Carolina rig or dragging a drop shot. For bigger fish, especially when you're having to fish fast and cover ground, because to, to get a big fish to eat a drop shot, you got to fish slow most of the time. Extremely exactly. slow. Yeah, it's painful sometimes. And if those fish are moving around, you can't afford to be in the wrong spot and fish slow, you'll waste your day. So that's why these reaction baits are so important, these winding baits. You can get the reaction from the fish on the go as you're moving, and a big fish will react to those baits. But you've got to pick the right bait, and you've got to fish it efficiently in the cover that's presented to you that you're in at that time. Does that make sense to everybody? And the, the, key, the key thing with those baits right there is that they're almost bulletproof to water temperature. Mm -hmm. They're bulletproof to mm -hmm. water temperature, and I'm going to give you a little story to Absolutely. go along with that. I was catching all those fish I explained to you all earlier two, three weeks ago on an underspin, okay, a uh, flashy swim with a swim bait, all right? And I mean, kept shaking off, kept catching trash fish, kept you know, trying to get rid of them. Yeah, six of pounders, them. trash fish. And then, we would, then we'd catch a, a good 240 or a 250 under, you know, and everybody was all happy. And so, but the problem was- Not in my the, boat. The water temp was in the 60s and low 70s at the time. As soon as that water temp dropped under 60, that bait became null and void. They wouldn't hit it no more. All right, and then I eat, that's when these things really shine. Mm. They'll shine in the 60s, they'll shine in the 50s. <laughs> they'll even shine in the 40s sometimes. Shine in the 40s, <laughs> I've in caught fish on a chatterbait in 38 degree water out here. Yeah, but the thing is too, is that you're, you're target specific and you're location specific, where the, some of these places I was fishing in, you couldn't use those baits. Mm. You, you, you stay hung up in garbage and there's stumps and, and roots and and just trash galore in these areas, you know, because like I said, I was only in that deep yeah. of water. And, and in that situation, mm -hmm. in that situation, I would have brought one more bait up here and it would have been a Movement ADX. It only dives about that deep and yeah. it has the best deflection qualities of any crankbait on the market, period, in a story. Mm -hmm. I don't care what brand it is, what, it's a very unique crankbait and I've never had one that deflects as good as a Movement ADX does. And if I'm gonna fish water that deep, and I need a winding bait, that Movement ADX is the deal. And if I, I had a good deal. friend <clears throat> that would give me a Movement 88, <laughs> you know, I could have tried that in those areas, but I don't know anybody that has any Movement 88s, you know, so I wouldn't have been able to tell you that I caught those fish. Well, if you can start 88. saying it right, it's the Movement 80X, maybe you'll ADX, get some. Okay. <laughs> 80X. Yeah, so it shows you how much I know about it. So, but man, you, acts like I've never given him a bait. You did give me uh, one. <laughs> well, that's a lot more I give him my else. That's right. That's right. But uh, <laughs> you know, that just gives you an idea about the location, where you're fishing, what the water temps are. Paying attention to water temperature too is a lot, lot, lot key to how you're going to set mm -hmm. up for the day, when mm -hmm. you're going to set up for the day, and understanding that yeah. here we are on a warming trend, and every day that sun's beating down on this, water gets a little bit warmer each day, each day, each day, and that reaction bite changes. And like Lee Levesay was talking about, he was banking all his cards on the fact that those that water was warming enough that his afternoon bite was, was going to save him, you know, and it finally and, and did today. Unfortunately for Lee, I think if the tournament ended at, at 5.30 in the afternoon, yep. I think he would have done a lot Ab better. Ab Absolutely. Yep. I don't know what happened to Lee. I don't have any idea. All I know is last day of practice, he found some fish in the afternoon. And I know the area he was fishing and where Lee's fishing is traditionally where the biggest group of the biggest fish go shallow. It just is. Every fall. It's known. It's notorious for it. It's glade. It's glade. Did he, did he make the cut? Yes, he did. None of y'all better fish in glade tomorrow because I'm saying this. I swear, please he's in, don't. He, he's in 30 second right Please now. don't, because this won't air till after the tournament's over, but please don't hold jump Lee. But um, he's fishing in glade. Well, glade's known to have like the biggest numbers of big fish that kind of group up in it in shallow water. And so he's going for it. Like he's trying to win the thing fishing in there. And he saw something. He said, and that's what he said. He said, I saw something late in the day on the last day of practice. And I think. If I'm a betting man, what probably happened was he saw them fish get active and start biting right about the time he, they practiced till five or they practiced till dark. So he may have saw those fish start getting active at 3.30, 4, 4.30, right? Well, his tournament days are over at three. 
So those fish finally start biting a little bit in the afternoon today, but he didn't have enough time to catch them all. But he feels he's good enough yeah. to, to make them to bite. To make them bite. That's right. He started he his morning in there. there yeah. Yeah. They didn't like swim four miles away. You know, uh, they're in that vicinity, just like what Rick And if anybody's good enough on this lake to make some Absolutely. fish bite, it's him. Absolutely. The problem is, them fish on this lake are harder than anywhere else to make bite when they don't want to. They just are. They just are. He, he said today that he lost three big ones. Yeah, I don't doubt it. He's in it. Today he's in there winding a uh, he's in there winding a crankbait, and it's easy to lose him on a crankbait. And he's in there fishing that timber and all that. Like I know what he's doing. I mean, we've all been in there and done that this time of year. Um, he was. I saw what he was doing, and I was like, Whew, if you pull it off, like I, I felt like if he were able to get five keepers a day in there, he might win the thing. The problem was he just wasn't able to. You know, unfortunately. It's a shame, man. I know it's a lot of pressure on him when he comes here. I know last time when he was here in May, he was really wanting to do good. And the last day ago. He, he was, it almost seemed like he was losing confidence. He was mentally spinning out a little bit. And I don't want to say, you know, accuse him of anything negative in any way, but just from a dude who's seen him go about his routine in the morning a bunch of times, like he just wasn't the same. Like he seemed like he was kind of freaking out a little bit mentally last time they were here. This time he seemed a lot more relaxed. And I'm sure winning that last tournament has a lot to do with that. But he seemed a lot more comfortable, a lot more relaxed. But still, man, you know, inside, he's gotta be just wound up to want to win one of these things at Lake Fort. Cause you know, he wants to prove to the world that he's the best Lake Fort fisherman because he's succeeded the most out of anybody in the last however many years, you know, as far as the tournament goes. Yeah, but the mental game is, Whew, so, tough. is, is so, so, so powerful when you're here, no matter what sport you're in. And, you know, I mean, it's all perspective and how you put it. And, you know, you have that fear tucked way back in there somewhere. And, you know, it's, there's no telling the you know, doubt. What, what goes the doubt. through his mind. You know, as far as that well, goes. And what I think we all need to remember with Lee is, I mean, the expectations to, to expect him to come out here and win two tournaments in a row. Nobody, it's very rare that guys ever win two in a row. Does it, does it even happen? Um, it has happened. I'm sure it has two, happened. It's happened to guys like Clun or Van Dam. Like two or three times ever mm -hmm. yeah. in the history of the sport. Right. And what we also got to remember is Lee is in his second year doing this. Yeah. He's a sophomore, man. Like yeah. He's going to get better at the mental aspect of the tournament, the four-day tournament grind game, year in, year out. He's going to get better at that. And I, I think, you know, now that they're coming here with the way-in-the-boat format, I think it's a matter of time before he wins one here. And I, I for sure think he's going to win plenty of more tournaments in his career. I mean, he, he went out there, his first two events he fished, his first year last year, he almost won them. He had a little bit of a tough year this year. Who did? I mean, there's a lot of guys that struggled this year that are really good. Because, I mean, it was just chaos this year, the whole year it was. And he, so he had a tough year, but he's had a great uh, finish to the year, for sure. So we're proud of him, no doubt. Um, man, we've wandered all over the place tonight in this deal, haven't we? We, we have kind of meandered around. Uh, nobody's asked any questions. Question. Nobody's asking any question. questions. You ask John Cox. John Cox is a hell of a lot better frog fisherman than I'll ever be, and uh, he's caught one on a frog in two days. Six pounder. It was a six pounder, yeah, and he was bound. He, he he caught one on a frog. He was bound and determined to catch him on a frog today. I wanted to go follow him today. I, I, I had no idea where. He was I don't think at. you can get to the places John Cox <laughs> goes. <laughs> no, he runs that aluminum boat and he goes back here. I don't think you can even get to the places John Cox goes. I think that's why he runs that boat. He likes it like that. But um, there was a good frog bite. Um, before we had, you know, last week we had like all that crazy, cold, rainy, dark weather. Before that, there was a pretty solid frog bite yeah. most days. Um, not great every day. Some days better than others. But since then, it's gotten kind of cons like steadily gotten more sporadic after the cold front came through. Even with the sun and the warmer weather, I haven't really seen the frog bite come back. It's like a lot of those fish that were so dirt shallow that we were catching on a frog, that cold front pulled them out, and those are those tweener fish that we're all out here trying to crank now. You know, that's kind of what I'm what I'm thinking is going on there. So. And all those fish I had telling you about the the trash fish on the on the swim bait, the underspin, I could not get them to hit a frog in there. This guy keeps calling them trash fish. <laughs> and uh, they would not hit a frog, and I was absolutely starstruck. I said, "How in this cannot be?" You know, and you catch a seven pounder, and then 
and then you're, you're going along and I'm digging the box, I'm digging frogs out, and there's just this most beautiful stuff to throw at. You need to know somebody from Six Sense to get you one of them new Six Sense Vega frogs. I don't know anybody with Six Sense, do y'all? I don't know anybody with Six Sense. <laughs> so, maybe Christmas. Yeah. Questions, yeah. any more? Gotta be some more. Somebody gotta ask a question. You gotta be a good question. We've yeah. probably lost them. We've talked in well, so many circles you know, tonight. The, uh, to sum this whole thing up, the, the thing that is really the most outstanding with this event is that the fish are suspended in those trees, and most of the guys or are around docks are yeah. docks, but they're catching suspended fish, which is what the hardest yeah. thing to do. No matter what, no matter who you are, it requires an, uh, an amount of patience that's off the chart, and you got to put your nose to it. And it's like he mm. he said it perfectly in the fact that he's sight fishing, you know, and so he yeah. knows that that fish is right there by that tree. And he's oh, the only one sight fishing. And I'm going to give you an example <laughs> to this, and this just happened to me like three weeks ago. I'm fishing a group of trees like that, but I'm not throwing a crankbait on them. I'm flipping them. Shocker with a drop shot. And uh, I'm going along these trees. What pound test line? And, 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 and we're going along, and there was an aluminum boat about 150 yards away with three guys in it. So he's he's coming towards me, and I'm sitting there flipping those things, and you know just seeing it. It's eight foot, ten foot, five foot, six foot. You know, going along, going along, and that boat's getting closer and closer and closer. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, oh, these guys are gonna just pull right in here. I mean, what is going on with this? And the closer they got, I'm looking like, mm, this is something unusual about this boat. Now I'm interested. And so I'm watching, I'm flipping along, and he comes within about 20, 30 yards of me, and a guy's got an antenna in the front. And I'm like, okay. And he passes, I'm watching him, and they're going that way, and I'm still flipping, I'm watching, they go about 100 yards away from me, and they stop, and he turns back around, <clears throat> and they're looking, they're talking amongst each other, then the guy in the back picks up a rod, starts throwing to a certain stump, and I'm like, it's text Russian Wildlife for their tracking. And somewhere. I'm like, yeah. this, this is crap. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> right over there. I said, hey, guys, come on. Uh, 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 my curiosity's got the best of me. I have to know what's going on here. And he said, yep, there's a 16-inch fisher. I want him. <laughs> That's perfect. That's exactly the fish I'm looking Leave for. Leave him there. Quit throwing at him. And uh, it was by a stump, and I flipped that stump three times as I was passing by, and he never looked at it. That guy threw that Texas rig in there on that stump for 30 minutes and never got that fish to bite. And he said that's part of their program. What they're studying right now is is how bass boats affect fish. You should have watched the last seminar. We had the yeah. biologist in charge of that, that right here. Telling, oh, really? telling everybody I about that. See. And I thought that was, I'm thinking, really? And he yeah. said, yeah. And I said, well, how many? He told me they had so many of them out, da, da, da. And they've only caught two of all the fish that they planted in uh, two lakes is what he told me. That but, but they tagged 23 in lake fork and 11 of those 23 have been caught in the last six months since some i caught one of them oh oh but people caught them people in caught them and then yeah. they then you text in a text park while you tell them that you caught them yeah uh so 11 think about this 11 this is how much pressure the lake gets they tagged 23 fish in lake fork 11 of the 23 have been caught in six months if you extrapolate that and who knows how accurate that percentage yeah. is extrapolated across the millions of fish in the lake like 40 45 percent of the fish in the entire lake have been caught in six months that means every fish in this lake gets caught every year basically percentage wise 90 percent 90 percent 80 to 90 percent of the fish in this lake get caught each year well but did you hear what zona said that's crazy yesterday i think he said that since this lake is open they've put 14 million fish in here stocking yeah and i went yeah. 14 million well i mean you seem like yeah but that stocking hasn't been you got to think bass typically live between 10 and like 13 14 years yeah well if you go back and look at how many have been stocked in the last 15 and years got eight by sand bass because the stockings mm. have not been near as prevalent as they were in the 90s and in mm -hmm. the 2000s like the stockings over the last 10 years have definitely slowed down so if you start taking that into effect we don't have near that many that have been stocked that would still be alive today yeah um now those ones that they stocked had the chance to reproduce and put more fish in the lake and so forth and so on I'm not saying that like anything against them but uh yeah i mean that that shocked me when he told me 11 of the 23 yeah. had been caught because by those fishermen. two those guys in that boat and he was talking about their group the people that with the parks of wildlife that are fishing for them and so that doesn't count guys like him catching you know you catch him one i could was just well the they guy. they so their <clears throat> deal is it's all science right it's mm -hmm. not for fishing it's not competitive it's just for science so they are only throwing 
a Berkeley Power Worm Texas rig at these fish when they see them. They're not throwing. throwing a drop shot. Exactly. They're not throwing a jig. They're not throwing a crankbait and getting a reaction bite. They're not doing any of that. They're only throwing a Texas rig Berkeley Power Worm because it's a scientific survey. So they got to keep the bait the same on every fish so that they know, okay, this many of these fish bit this one bait that we threw. So it's all like, it's a constant in the, in the, in the science. So. I don't know. I'm talking about stuff way out of my pay grade now. I'm talking uh, about science, dog. Like, science. You know how far out of science. my league I am? Yeah. That's science and the guy that uses steel cable on his rod and reels. So The okay. science is reel fast and pull hard till he's in the boat. That's the science I go by. Break strength. Uh, I will say this. He breaks off way less than I do. So I boat flip 10 pounders, baby. Let's go. Yeah. I can't remember where it was. Oh. Some of y'all may have seen this. There was a video a few weeks ago. I filmed with a buddy of mine, John Maxville, on another lake, and we were fishing, and it was it was a big fish contest, and the loser had to put spike it in his mustache. Oh yeah. god! Yeah, it's pretty tough, pretty tough deal. And John, the first, like we just decided this contest, I barely have gotten up on the front deck and grabbed a rod, and the first fish John hooks is like a five and a half pounder. <laughs> now I'm like, the first fish, really. <laughs> The first fish. Day goes on and on. We get on this little offshore spot. I pick up a jig and sling out there and set the hook. And this fish comes up shaking its head, doesn't even jump all the way. And it's one of them. One of them. And like we both are like, oh, as soon as the fish jumps, and I know I've got him beat. And he goes, I ain't going to help you beat me. And I went, that's all right. I'll boat flip him. It's like this big, like seven pounder. And I just boat flip him. And he just, like his reaction, he sounded like a little girl squeaking when I did that. <laughs> He's like, oh. <laughs> spike it on the mustache and, and he put spike it on his mustache no yes, he sir. did oh yes oh, oh on camera gosh. on, on ca camera yes oh, oh man hey that's the second time i've ever done that uh -huh. little bet challenge deal or whatever and i'm proud to say i'm undefeated in the spike it challenge i've won both of those deals so yep I think it's about time to go eat dinner. What do you think? Anybody got any more questions? Y'all ready to go eat? The only pro I saw do any good back there, you know, in Birch was on a road bed. Really? And so I guess that they, you know, they're maybe they're starting, they were a four and a three, eight or whatever, but man, mm -hmm. you just keep coming back to that one road bed back there. Yeah. But maybe they're starting. The one right by the bridge? No, no, way back. Oh, back, back. back. Way back there back. by your place. Yeah. Or past way your back place. Here. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that one runs straight across the lake. Yeah, it's only about yeah. five feet. Yes, exactly. Right. Hard surfaces can account for that for some strange reason in the fall. And barfish and sand bass do love to get on road beds in the fall. That's right. Absolutely yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Road beds and pond dams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so that's mm -hmm. uh, what, what the hard surface has got to do with it, I have no idea. But I've been doing it for years. I, there is a darn good pond dam that that old boy that's leading caught one off of right over here, like where he caught those fish. Um, there's a really good pond dam in that stretch, and it's not where he caught most of his fish, but one of his bigger fish that he called later in the, like later in his little spree he went on this morning did come off of that pond dam too. Hmm. He's just, I'm telling you, it's not about where he's fishing. It's, it, how he's it, fishing. it's about that he can see them on that live scope and he's just trolling along till he sees some fish on a tree, and then he's watching. And if they react to the jerk bait, he'll keep fishing for them. And if they don't, he moves on to the next ones. And he's just so much more efficient and accurate. And he's sight fishing, and nobody else in the lake is sight fishing. And if it's springtime, and absolutely nobody goes sight fishing, and I'm the only one out there in April looking at beds, I'm gonna whack them every day. I'm going to. I mean, and so are you. You're so an are insanely you, good so bed you. fisherman, though. Well, I mean, yeah, but everybody could whack them bed fishing if yeah. nobody else flipped at them. Yeah. You know? And that's what Patrick Walters is essentially dealing with right now. Hey, I talked to the guy, uh, Ed Lachlan, after he weighed in today, after he did his little interview for Wayne or whatever. I guess he was coming on stage. I put him aside and talked to him. I actually got it on video. It's going to be part of that vlog we're doing about the tournament. And, and he, he's in second, and he's the closest guy. He's like nine or ten pounds behind him. And on Lake Fork, that's not, it's one bite. I mean, theoretically, it's one bite. Ask Seth Fighter, 9-9, nine, nine, right? In a random place, he didn't expect to catch him. But he was like, he goes, man, Patrick's not going to slow down. He goes, he's got this deal. He goes, I wouldn't want to be anybody trying to win this tournament other than Patrick Walters. He goes, there's no way. We're not catching him. We're not like he's gonna win. <laughs> he he kind of made those hints today when he was on stage. 
Yeah, he so knows. Like, I, I mean, he he said, I'm yeah. going to go at him tomorrow, and I'm going to hammer down on him again, and I'm not letting up. Yeah, he, he's... It may believe me. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, well, and he's get, probably got a lot of different locations, The, the too. problem is, it's not even a location. Yeah. It's not like he's got five of these road beds or five of these main lake points or creek bends. He can go anywhere on this lake and do that. They said yesterday he had only fished, after all of day one, he had only fished a quarter yeah. of what he had marked to do that. And he doesn't have to have a mark. Let me tell you what he can do. And what he did this afternoon was he went to an area he didn't even touch. It happened to be kind of close to the weigh-in area. And he just went over there and did the same thing. He caught a couple of fish. They didn't call him up any, but he caught a couple. And if he wants to, I can tell you, he can just go right across and go hit that point with all that timber on it. Go do it right there. And then he can run right up to the next pocket and do it on that point with that timber on it. And do it. Like, he can fish the whole lake like that, and nobody else is touching it. Hmm. Yeah, I notice a lot of them have the live scope or the 360. Um, after this tournament, they will. <laughs> well, and that's because they're not allowed to watch, and they can't get info from the other guys that are still in the tournament. But that's what Curtis told me about the Palma. You know, he said, he said, uh, Curtis says I'm buying a 360 after what I saw. I'm sorry, they can get they can get info from the guys that are still in the tournament. Patrick Walters ain't telling nobody nothing. Right, exactly. Yeah, now you, which one did you, the 360 is almost as, you think it's no. good enough? No, the live scope's the deal. Water, right? The live, the live scope's the deal. Yeah, it's two different perfect. looks is what it is. But Patrick Walters has got three graphs on the front of his boat. Yeah, I've seen a lot of electronics last year. He's using all of them. Yeah, he's pulling a wheeler. But when he's spotting those fish on, now he may spot fish on a 360 somewhere else, and then he puts the live scope on them and looks directly at them and then casts to them. So when he's actually seeing the fish and trying to catch it, he's he's throwing his jerkbait doing this. And everybody's And wondering, he's watching that live scope. Everybody's wondering what he's towing behind his boat. It's another group of batteries. Yeah. 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 He's got a raft back there that's holding nothing but backup batteries. <laughs> Cause he's gonna burn them all out. Use it all the way. Is that what he's got? He's got lithium well, he in has it? to run yeah. that much electronics. Run that. Right? And run I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and guys are upsizing their batteries and, you know, getting extra batteries in the boat hooked up and yeah, guys are absolutely having to address the battery issue in boats now. Yeah. Well, with that many. Yeah. It's a lot of electronics. Yeah. You're tra you know what's crazy is, yep, we could actually, <laughs> these new trolling motors, these brushless ones, if you have a Lowrance or a Garmin trolling motor, you could actually use, probably go down to a 24 volt system. I can run that with these brushless technology. I mean, I could not charge my trolling motor for a week and go, and go every day. It's quieter too. I've never even, it's just less resistant. I think it's less power. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But because I turn, dude, I spend most of my time with my trolling motor at Lowrance, it's on like between two and three. Unless I'm like trying to hurry and get somewhere, like when I'm actually fishing, it's never higher than three. Never higher than three. And at two or three, you have to look down there sometimes to make sure the lights are. Hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, you don't hear anything well, at all. He passed yeah. me, he and I were fishing in an area. Yeah, yeah, when you turn it up, it'll me go. One day, and he was doing solid seven <laughs> miles an hour. And then he let by me on that, on that trolling motor. Yeah. Mine only do like three miles an hour, that old Trex. And I mean, he went by me at seven miles an hour. I'm like, no, that's incredible. That's Bro, we were, remember we were over at Welsh, mm -hmm. and we were both in the discharge. We were in the discharge, and I was going into the current, still going five miles an hour. Yeah, I was like, oh. I was going into the current at the discharge and still going five miles an hour. But uh, yeah, yeah. When you crank it up to max, it gets it. I don't even know what pound thrust it is. It doesn't say what pound thrust it is. I think it's. I think it, it's. Uh, one hundred eighty-five. I don't know. It's no one hundred eight. I think. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's one hundred eighty-five, but it feels like it. Three eighty. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's weird because I know the Garmin is actually less than the old tricks, but it goes faster. It's that brushless technology. Yeah, it's, it's weird. yeah but old tricks. Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you, yeah. have you had experience with the Garmin trolling oh, yeah. motor? Yeah, they'll have no choice. You like it? Got it. I heard. I it's like just it. a matter of when they're gonna put it out. Yeah. But once I got used to that, yeah, it's was... spot lock good. Yeah, I, and it's comparable to old tricks. Yeah. You know, the thing, one of the things I like most about the Lowrance is it's a little more aggressive when you first hit spot lock on getting you on the spot spot lock, like locking you in. But once it settles in, man, it does, if there's any wind at all, it does. The boat doesn't even wiggle. Like there's no variance. There's no wandering. It never loses. I've haven't had to lose a signal one time this year. Um, and it's just so steady. Like it does, like the nose doesn't move, the, the back end, unless the wind changes directions, nothing moves. 
it, or unless it's dead calm. You know, all these dead spot, calm's the all these spot locks. If you spot lock them when it's dead calm, they lose their mind. They're, They're like freaking out going around the circle. <laughs> Just a bunch of overcorrections, yeah. but yeah. yeah. My old tracks, year and a half now, two motors, foot foot pedal. Yeah, it's not real durable. And a shaft. Yeah, it's not real durable. It's not a really. Now they've covered it all under warranty, but right. I'm like, <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah, I've had some I, I said armatures. I don't want it. I, I, now it's out of warranty. I'm like, oh boy, here yeah. we go. So. so the whole time I had an Ultrax before the other one came out, the whole time I, I said it every day, I wish I could just have a Fortrex with Spotlight. If I could have a, a troll motor built like a Fortrex with Spotlight, at least that would be durable and I would have Spotlight. Because that Ultrax was not, it's just not a tough built troll motor. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's as delicate as a tiny. And hey, I might be one of the only, I think, I, to, to my knowledge, at the time that it happened, I was the only person, Lawrence told me I was, uh, I was the only person at that time, and maybe I'm not now, but that broke a shaft, like snapped a shaft on a Lawrence. Um, but at eight miles an hour and you hit a stump, that could happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Especially when you got a boat full of fat boys in it. Right? I actually had it happen uh, on that on an old track. So no, on a, it, on a uh, four tracks one. My point was, it was a very extreme circum, like freak circumstance. I was going full speed in dirty water where I couldn't see the stumps, and I don't know if I hit a lay down or I hit one that big. I don't know. And there, the, where I was, there are some that big, like them big live oak trees, under the surface. I but think. normally, you hit a stump and the trolling motor kind of torques and then rolls off. Well, this just hit it and never rolled either way it just went straight under the boat eventually with full momentum on max speed at seven miles an hour it did snap the trolling motor shaft and Lawrence was like you did what <laughs> like uh nobody's ever done that before to one of these <laughs> like we built those things really tough nobody's done that i'm like well i did and they just they actually sent me an entire new trolling motor sent it to my dealer went down there and had it put on five minutes well, I wish I'd have come. wow and I've got such a great boat dealer partner with Nautical Miles. So what happened was I went down there, I broke the shaft, came off the water, went straight to them. They pulled that off, went back in their shop, found an old Fortrex, put it on my boat, let me borrow it. Five, six days later, my new trolling motor gets in, go back down there, swap them out. I never missed a trip. That's nice. I'm telling you, the service department at Nautical Mile is hands down, hands down, the best service boat marine service dealer that I've ever even encountered not even close where are they located tyler, tyler. just south of tyler right there on 155 my house. nautical mile marine they are the hands down best service department i've ever dealt with and chris is great man buying a boat from chris and dennis is great they're both super nice guys and chris uh can run your financing through all the finance people it's a really good boat dealer really good boat dealer good yes sir all right thank you Yep, thank y'all very much. Hey, we'll be back here in two weeks. We want to thank Lake Fort before we go. Let's go eat. Quit stealing my bait, Craig.